I'll come out with a left lead. Retreat, left, right, left. A right with the head. Glove, throw out the jab. <laughs> Water off a duck's back, matey. Out of the ring and onto the stage. Playwright Matthew Saville knew the feats of Bob Fitzsimmons would make good theatre. Uh, he had four wives, he wrestled with lions, uh, just did all the things that people did in the period and did them better. Carson City, Nevada, St Patrick's Day, 1897. The fight of the century. The South Island blacksmith won the world heavyweight title. The champ is down. I just want to say one thing. Bob cheated on me with his manager's sister, Rose. Two actors play young and old Bob, so telling his larger-than-life story. I wanted to say. The Thank cast you. are prepared in Fitzsimmons style. Now I believe that's a knockout in the first round. Getting up in the mornings, sculling eggs and sherry, <laughs> as Bob used to do in his day. And sometimes the fight sequences have been all too real. In fact, the other day, Nigel sort of punched me in the nose and I've hit Cohen in the head. And, and the actors took to the streets to drum up interest in the former champ. Not much. Never heard of him before. I've never heard that name in my life. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, well, he's from down south somewhere and he was world champion once, wasn't he? It's a play that aims to educate as well as entertain. He was a real incredible mixture of fierceness, generosity and kindness, you know. Like there's a story of him knocking out a guy who he really liked and then catching his glove and lowering him to the ground so he didn't hit the ground too hard. Kindness that came out of the painful childhood that started Fitzsimmons on the road to boxing glory. She took one look at me and said, You've been fighting, haven't you, Robert? And then she gave me the beating of my life. The boxer premieres here in Wellington at the Fringe Festival next Tuesday, before starting a run in Fitzsimmons' hometown of Timaru. The town where Savile first saw the Fitzsimmons statue that inspired him to tell the story of a long-gone Kiwi battler who took on the world and won. Di O'Connell, 3 News.